In the previous trainings of Dange Kit channel, we learned about some power electronic components such as thyristor, IGBT, and triac. In this tutorial, we will introduce another piece called DIAC, Diode AC Switch, or DIAC for short. DIAC is another semiconductor component that has three layers and two bonds. Unlike a transistor, a DIAC does not have a base connection and is therefore a two-pin device. These two pins are named A1 and A2. DIACs are components that do not have control or amplification capabilities, but act like a bi-directional switching diode and can conduct current with either polarity in an AC voltage source. We have already seen in the tutorials related to thyristor and triac that in on-off or on-off switching applications, these parts can be excited with simple circuits that produce steady-state gate current. In this figure, you can see that when the switch S1 is open, the gate current is not established and the lamp is off. When the switch S1 is closed, the gate current IG is established and the thyristor conducts only in positive half cycles because it operates in quadrant I. We also know that when the gate is triggered, the thyristor turns off again only when the source voltage reaches a value where its anode current, IA, is less than the holding current, IH. If we want to control the average current of the lamp, in addition to turning it on and off, we can apply a short pulse of gate current at a predetermined point to make the thyristor conduct more than half a wave. Consequently, the average value of the lamp current will change with the time delay T between the start of each cycle and the change of trigger or command point. This method is known as phase control. Two things are required for phase control. First, a variable phase shift circuit, usually a passive RC circuit, and second, a circuit or part that can generate the necessary gate pulse when the delay waveform reaches a certain level. One of the semiconductor components designed to produce these gate pulses is the DIAC. The DIAC structure is like a transistor with the difference that it does not have a base current and therefore it can be connected to the circuit with any polarity. DIACs are mostly used as trigger parts in phase excitation and variable power control applications because the DIAC provides a sharper trigger pulse as opposed to a ramp voltage that is used to turn on the main switching component. As you can see in the characteristic curve, the DIAC blocks current in both directions. This blocking continues until a voltage greater than VBR is applied and breakdown occurs in the component. In this case, the DIAC passes a lot of current at high voltage like a Zener diode. VBR point is called DIAC breakdown voltage. In a Zener diode, when the current increases, the voltage remains constant. But in DIAC, the operation of the transistor decreases the voltage by increasing the current. In the conduction state, the resistance of the DIAC is reduced to a very low value and thus allows a large amount of current to flow. In most common DIACs such as ST2 or DB3, the breakdown voltage is usually around plus or minus 25V to 35V. DIACs with higher breakdown voltages such as 40V DB4 are also available. Since the DIAC is a symmetrical piece, it has the same characteristic for positive and negative voltages. The negative resistance makes the DIAC a suitable component for triggering or driving thyristors or triacs. Applications of DIAC As we said in the previous sections, DIACs are used to power other semiconductor switching components, especially triacs and thyristors. Triacs have many applications such as dimmers, heaters, 
and motor speed controllers. In these cases, DIACs are used in combination with TRIACs to provide full wave control of the AC source. This shows the AC phase control circuit in which the DIAC is used. By increasing the voltage of the AC source at the beginning of each period, the capacitor C, which is in series with the fixed resistor R1 and the potentiometer VR1, is charged and its voltage increases. When the charging voltage reaches the breakdown voltage value, about 30V for the ST2 DIAC, the DIAC is broken and the capacitor is discharged. The discharge of the capacitor produces a sudden current pulse that so-called fires the triac into conduction mode. The phase angle at which the triac fires can be changed by VR1, which controls the rate at which the capacitor charges. Resistor R1 limits the gate current to ensure a safe value when VR1 is at its minimum value. When the control triac fires and goes into conducting state, the amount of transient current flows through it. While the voltage of the resistor capacitor combination is limited by the ON voltage of the triac and remains at the same value until the end of the half cycle of the AC waveform. At the end of each half cycle, the voltage source is reduced to zero, causing the current through the triac to drop below the holding current, IH. As a result, the triac is turned off and no longer conducts. Next, the source voltage enters the next half wave and the capacitor voltage starts to rise again, this time in the opposite direction, and the triac firing cycle repeats. As we said, the diac is a very useful part that is used to start triacs, and due to its negative resistance characteristic, it turns on quickly when it reaches a level of applied voltage. Of course, this means that if we want to use a triac to control alternating current, we need a separate diac. Fortunately, it is sometimes possible to replace a separate diac and triac with a switching component called a quadrac. Quadrac. Similar to the triac, the quadrac is a three-pin semiconductor device that features a MT1 main terminal, usually the anode, a MT2 main terminal, usually the cathode, and AG terminal gate. Quadrac is available in different types depending on the switching voltage and current requirement. Quadrac is basically a combination of DIAC and TRIAC forming a single chip. This part is also called internal TRIAC trigger. Quadrac is controlled by the gate with any polarity of main terminal voltage. This means that Quadrac can be used in applications such as heater control, lamp dimmer, AC motor speed control, etc. The difference between 5-layer DIAC and 3-layer DIAC. The 3-layer type of DIAC consists of 3 layers of P, N, and P crystals. DIAC has two working modes, off and on. Due to the same impurity of P crystals, DIAC shows different characteristics. The conventional sign of a 5-layer DIAC is the same as a 3-layer DIAC. Excuse me, three-layer diac. But its characteristic curve is slightly different. In fact, when a three-layer 35V diac is conducting, the voltage at both ends reaches about 30V, but when a five-layer diac is conducting at 35V, the voltage at both ends is reduced to 5V. This allows for the generation of a needle pulse with a larger amplitude. Since 3-layer and 5-layer diacs have a negative resistance region, an oscillator circuit can be formed using these circuit elements. In general, a 5-layer diac is a bidirectional semiconductor switch that can be turned on in forward and reverse polarity above a specified voltage. It is often used to provide defined switching for triacs. Conclusion DIAC is known as one of the most important electronic parts of the thyristor family. 
This part is used together with the triac to control the brightness of the dimmers, control the engine speed, and control the temperature in the circuit. This diode is a non-conductive piece that consists of two anodes and usually prevents current from passing through the circuit. But if the voltage value of the two ends of this diode crosses a range called breakdown voltage, at this time you will see a dramatic change in the performance of this part. The diac conducts the electric current and its internal resistance is reduced to a great extent as long as the intensity of the passing electric current is not less than a certain interval the conductivity property is maintained in this electronic component. After reducing the electric current, the resistance of this part returns to its original state and does not become conductive. 